and Yang, welcome to Delightful. Like many people, I've slowly emerged from my winter cocoon, sleepy and dazed from the rush of Christmas festivities and New Year's celebrations. It sure is hard to get yourself back into working gear after winter break, isn't it? It's still freezing outside where I live, and all I want to do is wear pajamas and cuddle up in a mountain of blankets. So I thought I'd express this feeling through, what else? A custom doll, of course. I know why you come here. I'll be using this Frankie Stein doll from Monster High. It's one of the later releases with little articulation. I got a couple of these mixed in with a large eBay purchase, you see? I wouldn't use this for a complicated project, but for a simple doll with most of the focus on the head, I suppose it'll do. At some point in the past, I must have prepped this doll base, so I've got no footage of that, but it's a simple enough process. Heat up the head and tug it off the neck peg, remove factory paint with 100% acetone, cut the hair off short, and extract it through the neck hole. You've seen me do it plenty of times in other videos. First up is fresh hair. What goes better with mint green than pink? Nothing. Best color combination in the world. <laughs> it also feels very delightful classic, doesn't it? I love this palette. This hank is too long for what I have in mind, so I'm simply going to twist tie off a chunk to separate it. And cut it in half, I think, will do. Go ahead and keep these hanks in smaller sections like this. I find it easier to work with several small hanks rather than trying to keep one giant hank untangled. The original doll had a side part, but I want a middle part, so let's go ahead and mark that with a pencil. Whoa, geez, there's this giant gash in the back of her head. I must have cut it open to fish out the hair plugs? That's weird, I never do it like that. Use a pen to create holes along the new part. Pinch off a plug's worth of hair. Feed it onto the eye of the needle. And pop it into the temples. Work your way around the hairline first. Then spiral inwards and eventually work your way down the part. There's actually no right or wrong way to fill in the hair, but I find this sequence makes it easy to keep track of which plugs are empty. Find what works for you. If you do fill in the part along a single line, as I am doing here, you know it takes way more hair than you could ever imagine cramming in there to make it look decent. <laughs> Tie off the hair to make it easier to see and plug, plug, plug till the sun goes down. All right, looks good. What to do about this horizontal gash, though? Well, I guess we'll just stitch her head back together with a needle and thread and hope for the best. With a little styling, I'm sure we can hide it. Pour glue in through the head and squish it around the inside, using your sense of touch to try to ensure that you coat all the plugs. Set the head aside and allow that to dry overnight. Once that's dry, we can bundle it away into a hair burrito using a scrap piece of fabric. Seal the fabric around the edges of the hairline using pins. Cram the body back into place through the neck hole. Whoops, that's a bit too far. And she's ready for her face up. Taking the doll outside to a well-ventilated area, and with my filtration mask on, I give the face two layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. This preps the slippery vinyl surface to accept the pastel and pencil pigments to come. Let's start! Now, I follow a number of artists on Instagram who are proficient at these dreamy, sleepy, somewhat more realistic looking face-ups. You see it a lot from Korean and Russian doll artists, from what I've noticed. So I'm going to try my hand at this kind of style. I start off by blushing the doll with pastels. I dust on pink to match the hair, around the eyes, cheeks, lips, and a touch on the nose. And as always, if you'd like to know what I'm using, a list of materials can be found in the description box below this video. Next, I hesitantly scratch on the initial sketch of the eyes in a pink pencil, something that's not too dark in other words. Getting the rough sketch down in a pale color at first makes it easy to correct and erase before moving on to darker shades. I'm going for a half-closed expression this time, which I find harder to do, actually. 
There's less space to draw big old sparkly irises, and the angle of the eyelashes face is down, which feels more difficult to me. I can only speak for myself, but I find painting the face to be one of the most fun parts of doll customizing. But funny enough, it also goes by the fastest. Whereas rerouting and making clothes can take hours or even days, I typically complete a face in 30 to 40 minutes. Gotta enjoy it while it lasts! As I build up more layers of color, I occasionally switch back to pastels to build up a broader swath of pigment, then switch to pencils to resharpen the details, like all the creases in the eyelids. Alright, here comes the eyelashes at that awkward downward angle. Gotta hold my breath for this part. Phew, not bad. <laughs> they look nice and delicate. Okay, I feel like I've gotten as far as I can with the pencils, so I'm switching to gouache paints for the final highlights and details. Using a fine brush, it's possible to add hair-thin streaks of color into the irises and bring out the white highlights. I also use gouache to give the doll a hint of teeth. I usually regret doing this, but it turned out okay this time somehow. Let's call it done! What do you think? It's certainly not my usual style. It almost looks like somebody else drew this face up, so that's kinda weird. But I did a decent job with the eyelashes this time, and managed to achieve some super fine lines in the eyebrows, which I'm happy with. Next, let's bust out the sparkles and just go ham gluing stuff to her face, shall we? It looks a tad plain by itself, and the whole theme of this project is basically Delightful's comfort zone, after all, so I'm just doing what makes me happy. You can find tiny sparkles like this in the scrapbooking section at craft stores, as well as nail art supplies. Once the sparkles are dry, I unmask the hair, there's that pretty pink color again. And tie it off into pigtails. Adorable. Much like with the face, I'm just going to have fun and see where the materials take me. I've got pearl beads, silk roses, and ribbons galore. Surely some of this will work. That's looking quite charming. I didn't do a great job tying the bows though. Looking at the footage now, they're kind of sticking up vertically. <laughs> As for clothes, I found a lot of options in the doll closet that totally work for this character. These little nightgowns are super easy and something I made years ago before I even started the channel. So no footage of how to make these, but it's so easy you don't really need it. Here, I'll put it on screen now if you'd like to make one. Very cute, but needs a little more. How about this snuggly pink hoodie with cat ears? This is one of the many prototypes I created while perfecting the oversized hoodie pattern, which is available along with other patterns on my Etsy shop if you're interested. You thought I did all my plugging back in the rerouting stage, didn't you? Aw, doesn't she look like she's attending a sleepover? Like she's dressed really comfy, but she did her hair and makeup together with her friends or something. <laughs> oh, I was about to call the doll finished, but wait, I almost forgot the gloss. Paint varnish onto her eyes and lips to make them shiny. This brings a level of liveliness to the face. She's finished! The familiar mint and pink colors, the sleepy face-up, the comfy clothes that I didn't have to make new for this video. <laughs> It was certainly a comfortable and enjoyable project for myself. A great chill way to ease into this new year. I hope you had a nice time watching her come together too.
I've got two more similarly stiff-jointed dolls, a Draculara and a Claudine, I believe. It would be fun to make two more sleepy time pajama party dolls and have a trio. Thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe if you'd like to receive notifications when I upload next. Until next time, take it easy guys, have a pajama day, take that afternoon nap, and stay artsy! Annyeong!